And if you don't think there was giant fish and giant dragons on the earth, feast upon this. This right here in North Africa is a gigantic fish. That's the tail right here. And that's the fin. And these are the scales. And that's the fin right up there. And this fin is being attacked by this gigantic dragon right up here. And that gigantic dragon, his throat runs right down here, all the way down. And that throat is completely covered with dragon scales, obviously, because the dragon has scales on its throat. And you can see them, they're in little bunches, you see? That gives it flexibility so the thing can move its neck and flex. And it's still extremely well protected by these plates. Now, as it runs down through its body, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way, it got gashed right here. Something cut its throat. And there is ancient text about that he would cut his throat with his great and mighty sword. And that's, that would have to be pretty great and mighty. And it bled right out here in the desert. This is the effluent. This dragon runs across the entire north of, north of Africa. And all of this ran out into the ocean. And there's some text about the ocean or the, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the waters that were trying to drown a woman or something like that. And this all ran out. This all ran out of here. Now, I, what these waters were, were they were chasing some woman? I have no idea. There's so much to talk about now. Because all the things that were just considered just absolute insanity. Words that were just meaningless, crazy stuff. And now it's taken on a meaning that, well, let's say, to put it this way, it's, it's taken on new meaning. It's something we should investigate. That created the Cape Verde Islands, I believe, when this all ran out here. You see how it's piled up here and then it swishes off to the sides? Exactly what would happen from all this mud. And Plato said when Atlantis collapsed, which I think this is Atlantis, so much mud ran they would never speak of mud again. <laughs> And Atlantis was up right outside the Straits, they said. Well, what Straits, Roger? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because that looks like a pretty straight Straits to me. And what's that doing there? And guess what? What is this doing here? What's all that crazy looking stuff? That is the swish of the wish of the swish and the whoosh. And it washed over Atlantis out into the Atlantic Ocean here. So it looks like to me. Now how this fish is this big and how this dragon is this big and how they got here and why they're laying here in the desert on top. They're not buried by anything. These are right on top of the surface. And this, these are, this, this is just two of many, many, many things that I could show you that would just blow your mind. And if you haven't seen this before, this should be a pretty good mind blower for you because this thing goes all the way across North Africa. The tail is over here, you see that? That's the tail, is still dragon scaled tail running off, bleeding, you know, that's what they call effluent. Any, any, um, uh, autopsy guy or anybody that was in forensic you know, when they go out to take dead bodies out, if they've been laying there for a long time, you see exactly the same thing. They run off of the, it bloats out the fluids and forces them out. And they're red and black because that's the colors of blood. Primarily it's iron oxides, red and black iron oxides, which are your blood. So we, we all of these things, what was it like here? What was it like on Earth? It appears all these people were burying themselves under the ground, trying to hide from all of these events that were going on. Because they're finding all kinds of underground cities now. And of course, you have probably mostly know about Cappadocia and how tunneled and filled in with tunnels it was. And, you know, once you got in there in that labyrinth and you knew where you were going, you could have probably escape almost anybody. And they say that that's pretty much what they were designed for is for 
safety reasons. Now, I understand what they were. They were actually digestive systems and blood vessels and so forth from giant creatures because this wasn't just these two. They were everywhere. They were everywhere. So all of the cave systems and so forth, you could, if you know what to look for, you could find all the biology in them. Even Petra. You look at Petra. Let me show you Petra. <laughs> we're talking about giant Petra somewhere over in this area, but we're talking about giant creatures that had giant body parts and giant muscles and everything else. Well, right, I'm going to show you Petra in a second, but remember this. You see these little blocks? They have these little separations, and then they have black and white, black and white, and when they pinch together like this, that's what a muscle does. These are muscle sarcomeres, and that's what they look like unpinched. When they pinch, they come together. Now, let's look at Petra. You see that? That's Petra. Those are sarcomeres right there. Those are blood, blood sarcomeres. I mean muscle sarcomeres. Just exactly what I showed you a second ago. You see how they have the black ones and then the white ones? These are blocks. That's a block. You see that? That was a block. You see they punched these little holes in here? That's to let the moisture come out. Because they carved these when they were wet. They were still moist. So the earth, in my estimation, was flooded and all of these gigantic, gigantic, gigantic creatures died. And then they were... The, the earth was almost boiled, apparently. And these were pretty much parboiled. And then they sort of dried out and this is all muscle. And inside the treasury, inside the treasury, you can see the, which is inside that area, this is all muscle too. That's all body parts carved into. You see the blood vessels up here? This is all tenderness and body parts and muscle and fibers and all that stuff. So that's what this is, is built from, is somebody's body. And it was all wet, and, and they did this obviously when it was wet. And I have other areas that I can show you. Well, let me show you. All right, you see, this is in uh, Fuerte del San Piata, Bolivia. And these are tire tracks from a excavator machine that cut these slabs of wet tendons. This is tendon. That's better building material than flesh, to be honest with you. And that's what they built these walls with down in Peru and Bolivia and all down in there. And that's why they put them together and they fit perfect and they're all oddball odd sizes because they put them in like wet putty. This machine was in here when Obviously, it was it drove up here when it was wet, but it didn't drive here. Something must have set it down. Look at this. Here, I have another picture of this somewhere here. Hold on. Yeah, look. That didn't drive here. It didn't drive here. Otherwise, it would. You would see the 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 things would keep keep going. Something dropped this down from the sky. As far as I'm concerned. If you see any, how you see anything different there, I don't know. There's nothing here. It just stops right here. It didn't drive here. You see this way out here? And way out here? That was a big platform. And they dropped it here. Now, whether this was here as, as wheels, I don't know. Or whether it just lacked here and this locked it in so that it couldn't move. Because obviously something was over here cutting they must have had big long excavator arms that cut into there and cut slabs off because they used these slabs to make those fabulous walls and they, and they were making them out of body parts and I can prove that too. Now this is another one. This was wet when this was done. This was moist and that is just like the same kind of a, a off-road tire that we have today. You see the tire pattern here? You see it driving across there? Rolling across there. This is tendon. You see that? That's the slurpy they call it. S -s 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 small leucine rich protein membrane that slides through. And that's a tendon. You see this? They cut those slabs out of wet flesh and, and tendon. And now this p particular piece here, you see, this is the one right here. This is a blow up of it. That is, that's blood. That's blood and bone. I'm pretty sure this was a bone. 
right here inside a flesh or tendon. Tendon is an ideal building material, and I'll show you some tendon. This is um, this I believe is is muscle or it could be tendon, but that I believe is bone. This one up here, that, look at that piece. That's just nothing but raw, fleshy material. This is the kind of stuff you want to build with. And these are the ones that have the bumps on them. Let me show you that real quick. You see the bumps up here? The ones that are higher up here, they, they use the better building materials. And then they must have run out and they use all the scrap down in the front here. That's all I can think of. You see here it is. They're cutting these slabs off. This is the same stuff. This is the tendon. And then they built these walls back here. They cut all the slabs right out of here. So that must have had some kind of a machine doing that. See that? That's another tendon right there. The kid's using it to slide in. This is the slurpy stuff that I showed before where um, that tire track was driving over one of these tendons. You see, this is what it looks like pretty much. Somebody smoothed that down over a course of time or something. Because this is what it should look like. But somebody smoothed that out. And they might have done that when it was wet. See, this, this is what the tendon is. Now, this is one type of tendon from an Achilles heel. Remember we saw the things running down, the kids sliding down? That's the kind of stuff. There's another one, which is a f mat. That's the real good one for making the walls, and they have b bumps on the mat. Let me show you what that looks like. But that's the anatomical Achilles tendon. Okay, this is the really good stuff. These are tendon mats, and then they have this ball like this that's, that goes through a, a little anchor spot, and then the ball locks in below into a, a cavity there. And that's what anchors this in. This is ripped out. That's an that's an injury. Normally that ball, like this ball right here, same thing. And then there was another one that ran across the top and slid back and forth over the top of this one. And these have the same thing. They have them here, then they have them the next, and then they have them the next. Now, let me show you what these look like on um, on the earth, these tendon mats. And don't forget. There's a little bump right here that you see on all the tendon mats, and as you see them, they're all over the place. And that's why this one had one here, and then another one slid over the top. They were all over the place. You see how big they were? And don't tell me, oh, those bumps aren't the same thing. Yes, they are. They worked these when they were either wet or, or they worked them with machines or something. See, here's some more with the bumps come out. And the same thing. And you see these little growy spots? That's where blood is, is actually leaking out of there. There was, there was, you know, they say, oh, these are, these are bacteria growing on here, lichens or whatever. Yes, but they're growing inside of blood vessels. If you look to the center of every single one of these, you're going to find that there's a little tiny tube on the inside, which is the blood vessel. All right, this is all I can think of is this was a, a test wall to see what the best way to deal with these flat tendon mats are. And these are the ones where they broke off. You can see, if you look right there, you can see there's an actual bloody entrance in there because inside of every one of those straps, it was fed with, you know, blood and all that stuff. So these, they scraped them down and... You know, I don't know what they did here, to be honest, because I can see no other purpose for this wall other than to see how did this fare, how did this one work, because those bumps are natural. Those little squares are natural. These things are all laid in little tiny squares. It's amazing, the, and, and that gives it the flexibility to move around and, and twist and so forth and, and not rip apart. It's just amazing how, the, how bodies are constructed. It's truly incredible.